Hello viewers, Super GT here. If you jumped onto Gran Turismo 7 last week, you might have noticed this. I don't just mean a car going around a corner. I specifically mean the curb exploit. If you take a look at the inside wheels here, you can see the car getting pulled around the corner like a train on a train track essentially. And if we take a look from chase cam, the left hand wheels get latched onto the inside of the curb and physics works its magic. And uh, this is a technique that took over Daily Race C last week. Quite an interesting technique, really. And for those who have seen Initial D, something like the gutter run technique. Dip your inside wheels down and it kind of pulls you around. And the reason this is possible around this Kyoto circuit is there's three very long corners, three left-handers, one, two, and three. And it's something that can save you up to a second, maybe more, if you can get it right. It's quite a tricky technique. And it's something that is fairly controversial, I would say. Um, but it is essentially just an exploit of the current physics in the game. The video I made before this one was about also, to some extent, the physics of curbs. Uh, specifically those around Dragon Trail. Um, but this video, we moved to Kyoto. And we have a different scenario entirely. And that is really hooking your inside wheels on the inside of curbs specifically three very long left-handers. Now here, this is the first race and I didn't know about the glitch at this point, or exploit I think is the correct term to label this as. And I was up against this Swiss driver and I just put my nose up the inside and he kind of just turns away twice. That's the second time there. And he's gonna give me the run on the exit. Uh, the both of us driving the VW Beetle, which is really the go-to car in group three at the moment and eventually sucking myself into the lead of the race and as we round out uh, the final corner of the lap is a long lap here at Kyoto and that was basically the race um, he, he kept very close to me throughout the entire race and um, within a second there but um, I was able to be quite consistent bring home a win and yeah finish in first place in the first one not too bad 18 minutes 21 total time but what I wanted to do was take a look at the leaderboard and take a look at why my lap time was nowhere near the top. So I'm on a 2.15.9, the top was a 2.13.8 and I was quite puzzled as to why I was more than two seconds off. So I, take, uh, so I took a look at the, uh, the replay here, the number one, and then I realized what was going on with the curb exploit. And I gave it my own go, tried to master this technique my initial time was a 215.998, which I did before the first race. And um, that took me maybe about 20, 25 minutes to get that lap time without any exploiting. But here, uh, this session was really about trying to learn this technique. And it was actually very difficult to get right because it might seem very easy. It might look very easy when you watch the top time and the top players doing it. But you have to get the angle right. You have to get the speed right. You have to get the trajectory right. You have to enter the curb or sorry enter the exploit at the right angle and the right point of the corner uh, so it's not easy to do at all uh, to get it dead right on one lap on all three corners that you can really do it on it was not an easy thing to get right and as you see here just kind of struggling to really get the car the car kind of hooked up to the curb it wasn't quite working whilst on top of that you still have to set a good lap time anyway uh, so this first lap not a good lap time, you can see here, going wide on the exit of the uh, final chicane, eventually setting a 2.19. So that was a good three and a half seconds off what I know I can do. But we'll go again uh, through the first corner. This is one of the corners that you can exploit. And you see they're just latching on last minute. And I didn't really gain anything there. So even though I did latch onto the curb, it didn't gain me any time. So I obviously I didn't quite do it correctly. How about the second corner? Maybe turned in a little bit early. You see there, car kind of squirming on the curb. But eventually, going a lot quicker on the exit. Uh, so gaining maybe three tenths there because I got it right compared to my first lap. And it's really about timing for this uh, exploit. Once you get on the curb, you have to do it at a certain point of the curb. Really, maybe about three quarters of the way round. And that really flings you off the corner, slingsh uh, slingshots you off the turn and gives you a good run down the following straight. 
Uh, so here, I, I think I was doing it a little bit early, but I was a little bit quicker than my first lap. And uh, the final sector here, you know, it's quite tricky. I mean, it's, it's a tricky circuit, to be fair. It's a fairly long track, 2 minutes 20 or 2 minutes 15 for a lap. Uh, it combines the Yamo, Giwo and Miyabi circuits into one. So lots of turns to get right. And as I said, even if you get the, the curb uh, glitch or curb exploit correct on all of the three corners that you can do it on, then you still have to get the rest of the track right. Uh, so it's not really just a simple shortcut to success, as you might think. Um, but we're just going to complete this lap here. And it's going to be near enough four seconds faster than the first lap. Guys, see of not going wide on the chicane. Let's take a look then across the line. It's a 2.15.6 and that was faster already after two laps than I managed after maybe 20, 25 minutes on my first session. So it's definitely quicker. This technique is undoubtedly faster. Um, it's just really a case of trying to uh, hook up the, the absolute perfect lap. And here I got the, uh, I got it a lot better that time. So as we wind through the S's, I mean, the key thing really is that you get a good launch off the corner. It gives you much more speed down the following straight. And uh, by this point here, you can see that I'm nearly three and a half temps up at the first split just by getting that first corner bang on. Um, but then the second corner just really didn't hook up at all and then lost most of what I just gained at the first corner. So the point I'm trying to get across here is that as I do go tiny bit quicker the point i'm trying to get across here is that this was actually very hard to get dead right it was actually really hard to hook up an entire lap hook up all of the curbs hook up the rest of all the corners as well without making a mistake it was actually incredibly difficult to do and i couldn't quite get it right my lap times were fairly consistent 2156 2156 2157 but pretty much every lap i'd always get one of the curbs like horrifically wrong uh, 2.16.3 that time. So you can see the lap times fairly consistent, but just not, I wasn't really able to go faster than a 2.15.6. Um, but if I had perhaps hooked up all my best laps, I would have got a 2.14.9 according to the optimum bottom right of the screen. So there was much more on the table, but I thought I'd jump into another race. Aura here was asking if I was trying to learn, and that is correct. I was trying to learn the technique. Before I remarked, curb physics lol. And um, in fine English, Okay, let's jump into this race then. Courtesy of that lap time, a 2.15.6, that put me on pole position for this next one. And if I didn't improve, I would have been starting about third or fourth. So it certainly does help. It did put me a bit further forward than, uh, you know, if I didn't abuse the game and abuse physics. Now this race, this was kind of the end of the race, really. That is Lawrence, the guy who apparently deleted his account in the previous video. He didn't, obviously, because he's here racing. But he's crashed immediately. That was the end of the race, really, because no one uh, really caught up to me from that point onwards. Fairly consistent lap times, a lot in the mid 216s. And then I, I finished with an 18 minute 17 race, which was about four seconds faster than I imagined the first race. So, you know, the curb exploit definitely does work. But this was a really good race, this one. Um, so this one, we have digits behind. A Croatian driver, very, very fast indeed. And... This was not going to be as easy as the previous one. The first, uh, sorry, the previous race, it was over really by about this point here. Uh, this one was not going to be the same. Digit is very fast, very consistent. And the problem I had really was that I couldn't get the, the curbs consistently. And I kind of decided in this race, uh, I would just kind of race without really trying to, to use the gutter run technique. And if, it, it felt much more consistent, actually. It felt a lot easier to get right. I've been watching PX7 Aura throughout the week and, and some other drivers, and they are very quick with that technique, but it looks as though it's quite hard to get dead right. It's very easy to get it wrong once and to spin out and to lose loads of time, much more time than you would have gained by doing the technique. And therefore, in the aim of consistency and trying to finish in a decent position sometimes it is better uh, maybe just to not bother <laughs> with this uh, kind of technique but i suppose for time trial where you have infinite amount of time to uh to perfect your lap 
then it does make it a bit more worthwhile. Uh, so this first lap you see here, a digit has remained sort of within half a second of me. You can see him poking at the radar from time to time. He's very, very close indeed. Uh, but with all this practice that I've been doing, just trying to not uh, be too distracted by that. I know my breaking point here, just at the end of those letters on the road. And even though he is right behind, there's no need to panic and you know try to break too late or too early or defend the position. Just break where I need to break. It's very unlikely he's going to go for that move. It would probably mean he would overshoot it. End of the first lap, one more corner left to go. And again, still very, very close indeed. Uh, the pressure is very much on. I feel comfortable having done a fair amount of practice uh, laps. Maybe 15 laps or so of practice, which is quite a decent amount. And then crossing the line. And you see, he was very, very close indeed. So this race is going to be one of those where it's going to be hard to get away. You, you can't really rely on just pure speed and uh, just pulling away. He's going to give me a hard time for the rest of the race, you would presume, from here to the end. And coming up the hill, he's very close indeed. Two tenths behind. It's one of those where I think, do I need to defend this next corner? Do I need to defend? He's very close. He's just having a half of a look in, up the inside. Again, no need to defend. Just take the normal racing line. Close to the curb, or on the curb, but not quite going over it. And then down the hill into the sharp hairpin. These two corners are very tricky indeed. And he's put himself half on the inside. I know that, again, that will be a very difficult move to pull off likely to overshoot it so we're just gonna take the normal racing line for now and this race kind of continued like this for the next couple of laps whereby he was very very close indeed but couldn't quite make an impression until this point here end of lap number three coming down this hill this is a very easy corner to get wrong actually and i just go a little bit too wide I have to slow down and i lose crucial momentum i force him to the outside and make sure he cannot perform the undercut here so i just park on the apex and then drive off the turn and there's not much you can do about that but this is where my defense kind of left a small chink in the armor really because i did just leave a car whip from the inside and he, and he just went into it and i perhaps should have seen that coming and i didn't quite tried it around the outside didn't work so digit goes into the lead and it's a really close battle so far i'm going to try to keep as close as possible to keep the pressure on going through the s's uphill quite tricky to do this this close to another car because you can't quite spot the corners as you're going through as your view is blocked by the car in front and we're going to look up the inside we're going to try and force him narrow as much as possible to really alter his line and give him a poorer exit on the way out of the turn so i've got a good line here coming down the hill into the hairpin i'm going to stay to the inside hope that he opens up the inside and he does eventually and i keep it pinned <laughs> up the inside and take back the lead of the race so really good racing between the two of us really close indeed and i was never going to let him try to get away too much and get comfortable i just wanted to sort of assert some sort of authority on this race and just retake the lead and try to lead it from the front and try to establish myself in first place again he's not going to make this one easy for me as he's going to stay very very close indeed so through the long left this corner seems to go on forever and really it's the long left handers on this track those are the three corners where you know you can jump over the curbs and uh, let them pull you around like a train track and you know there are lots of other corners with curbs you know this corner has a curb but it's not really the type of corner that you need to, to do it on it's, it's the long corners that really help as um yeah, it's just the length of the corner. That it, that, that's what does it for you. So it's the perfect storm, this circuit, really. The long the long corners with the type of curb that, that allows it to happen. Um, but at this point here, something went wrong. Was it this lap or was it the next lap? I think it was the next lap. I began to just pull away slightly. So the gap is up to six tenths. About as big as it has been in this race so far. It's beginning to edge away slightly. Not by a huge amount. If I can just break the toe, that would be very helpful indeed. I haven't quite done that. I'm only I'm seven tenths ahead. Um, but it was a good finish to that lap. Setting a 2.17.5, so we're slightly off the pace, but really courtesy because we're fighting quite a fair amount. Um, but this race would end quite prematurely, unfortunately for the pair of us, really, because at this point here, we're still very close. 
But then I think he had some sort of controller issue or pedals issue. And then suddenly he dropped back a massive amount. I wasn't sure why at the time. And then looking back, you see there, he's just, he's just like three or four seconds behind all of a sudden. And unfortunately, that kind of robbed us of a really good race. Um, it was a good race up until that point, but ultimately, a couple of laps later, finishing the race, winning it, 18 minutes 21, um, going back to no curb running. Um, but we take uh, the victory, the pole position, clean race, and the win. Felt comfortable in that VW Beetle. But the question you're all asking, of course, is what about Scott Speed? How does the GOAT deal with this exploit? Well, let's take a look. First one, uh, starting in 13th, uh, trying to get the overtake done on this Nissan GTR, and we uh, we do get that job done. And this one, we have a outbreak myself. Went way too deep into the back of that Porsche. Subaru comes flying in as well. I get a penalty, and then the Subaru gets a penalty. Now, I'm not sure if this Subaru kind of thought that I caused that on him, but turns across here. I'm not, okay, I'm not really sure why. I outbreak myself against the Porsche. He outbreak break himself against me. And then, yeah, we're both off playing dominoes with each other, smashing each other about. Then, like naughty school children at the headmaster's office, we both serve the penalty together in unison. Perfect harmony there, beautiful stuff. Uh, go past this Mustang, retake 11th. How about this McLaren? We get past the McLaren, one car spins out, another one spins out. It seems like everyone is sending themselves to the Shadow Realm at this point. Another car does it, Porsche here. And he has a nice perpendicular meeting with the barrier. Um, and then this one, this was kind of like a silly incident really. Um, he was kind of slow off the turns. So I thought, alright, I'm just going to jump into this space and then it just kind of wasn't space. And then, yeah, we, uh, we murdered this poor chap. Then he had to do, I think it was about a 4,000 point turn just to get the car turned back, facing the correct way. I was almost going to get disqualified because I had to wait for so long. But I tried to do the right thing, you know, uh, let him go. It was one of those incidents where, you know, it's just unfortunate, really. And then eventually I overtook him properly without murdering him for the second time. And um, this was a funny incident. Well, it wasn't really funny at the time, but I'm trying to go overtake him. And he just kind of guides me gracefully into the wall. Then he just breaks massively into that corner. I'm not sure what is going on. And then obviously in the steward's eyes, that was my fault. So we get a four second penalty. Have to serve it. He goes through me and retakes eight. Um, anyway, later on, going back past this Mustang, I take seventh. And then I had a faint glimmer of possibly getting sixth place. Would you believe? After all of that chaos and carnage throughout the race, catching up to this McLaren, uh, double E27, can we get the job done? Let's take a look. He actually gets a really poor gear shift there. I don't know what happened there. Forgot to change gear or something. And I just nipped past to get sixth place on the line. Scott Jegg. I was going to say doing the business, but he didn't really do the business there at all. But, I mean, that, that guy was happy with me, at least. He gave me a round of applause. So, at least someone was happy. I thought I'd go again, because that was an absolutely shambolic mess of a race. Could we do it better? Scott Speed can do better than that. Um, and it wasn't long before this Brazilian was just sending himself into the Shadow Realm. And murdering himself for us. So, thank you to him. And we're up against Mr. Worldwide now. Pitbull. Down the hill. Later on the brakes and picture that with a kodak good sir sauce now look at this murdering meep i mean absolutely shameful stuff there um but he gets himself a nice five second penalty for his misdemeanors there serves it a bit later and i move up to six after one lap that's not bad of a return up against fast daddy dave the um the real GOAT for anyone who has any understanding of motorsport. We all know that Fast Daddy Dave is the man to beat. So I get past him with not really much of a fuss really. And move up into fifth with a couple of positions here to gain up against M. Miller. Fellow Beetle user. But then again, who wasn't? Everyone was using the Beetle pretty much. As we come up into this hairpin, 
it's going to be a case of breaking where I normally break. And this car kind of just goes a little bit wide. And then he just turns right. And uh, as far as I can tell, that's a left-hander. So I can't really explain that to you, ladies and gents. But there you go. Through this long left here, um, it looked like this guy just wanted to take the very wide line. Take the high road. And then this put us on a side-by-side -side course through the S's. And I gave him space. We gave each other space. And I kind of, I think he just backed out there, uh, played it safe, and preserved himself for another day. Then I caught up with this dude in the Kit Kat VW, and made the pass in the downhill into second position. But that was pretty much the race done, as um, the leader Michael Dolence's incredible name. Uh, he he was just way too fast for me, and all I could do was bring home a second, which I'm not too sad about given that we started 11th, so I'll take it. I will most certainly take that. But uh, there we go, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of an interesting insight into an exploit, which has kind of cropped up recently. Uh, let me know your thoughts on said exploit and just on Gran Turismo 7 in general, because it's kind of in a weird state, I would say, at the moment. But that's all from me. Take care. Have a nice day. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.